everybody. It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to my video today. Today's video is called 15 Myths About Cruising You Should Know About. And thank you everybody for subscribing to Traveling with Bruce and giving my videos thumbs ups. I really appreciate them. If you're thinking about going on a cruise, why not join Traveling with Bruce? We're going on a group cruise Next year in December, December 2020, on the Harmony of the Seas, Ambrin Travel will take care of all of the arrangements. Just click down below for a description and a link to see a video all about the cruise coming up and how to get in on the fun. I'd love to have you join me. All right, let's talk about 15 myths of cruising that you should know about. A lot of people think that these are true things that actually are going on on cruises. Not really. Here's number one. Uh, people think that cruises are crowded. They think that cruise ships are absolutely jam-packed with people and that you're stuffed into the thing like a sardine or something like that. Let me tell you, folks, uh, today's modern cruise ship, uh, not uncommon for a ship today to be at least 900 feet long, if not more than 1,000 feet long. That, by the way, is three football fields in length. Cruise ships have up to 20 decks or at least 10 or 12 that you can go on uh, think about this 12 decks long each one the length of three football fields and upwards of 120 to 180 feet wide uh, there is no way <laughs> you're going to feel crowded on a cruise ship you will find instances where there are lineups <clears throat> from time to time uh, look if you're all going to the uh, eight o'clock show uh you know, Jersey Boys or, or Greece or whatever the big show is in the main uh, the main uh, auditorium, it can hold up to 800 people. Yeah, there's several ways to get in there, but there'll be some lineups to get in, but you're not going to feel crowded. Even inside the auditorium, you're going to be amazed at just how gigantic these things are. It's really great. Uh, number two myth, it's for old and stuffy people. Uh, you're going to be just surrounded by people that are on their last legs and waiting to die. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there's a lot to do on a cruise ship for all ages. No question, there will be senior citizens on these cruises, but there'll also be 20-somethings. There'll be kids, of course. There'll be families. Uh, there'll be people of all ages, honeymooners, you name it. Those of us who've been on cruises, we know that cruises just are not for old, stuffy people. Uh, next one. Um, I'm going to be stuck on board. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm just going to be trapped on board a ship. I can't, I can't do this. Well, think about it this way, folks. If you're on a seven day cruise out of Miami into the Caribbean and back, uh, you're likely going to have three days where you're going to be uh, getting off the ship. The first day, let's say the first day is Sunday. That full day is uh, taken up with the check-in process, getting on board, finding your cabin, unpacking all your stuff. Then you're going to figure out uh, whether you're going to do the spa package or not. So you're going to go check that out. You're going to check out the uh, specialty restaurants. You'll probably go to your uh, main dining room area, figure out your uh, dining times. Uh, you'll have dinner, uh, walk around the ship a little bit. And I can tell you, right, by 9, 10 o'clock at night, you're going to be done. Uh, you might spend a few minutes or half an hour in the casino if you can last that long. You're not going to worry about the first day. This The, the Monday it might be a sea day. Uh, on that sea day, there are going to be probably uh, 50 things to do in 10 hours of time. You can't do it all. Uh, you'll be uh, booked right up. The uh, next day, maybe Tuesday, you're at an island. Wednesday, you're at a stop. Thursday, you've got a sea day. Again, 50 things to do. Uh, the next day is another sea day. Then it's Saturday, uh, last sea day on the way home. And Sunday, you get off the ship. It, there is no time to get bored on a cruise ship with 15 restaurants, 12 bars, the main dining room, comedy clubs, karaoke bars, discos, uh, trivia questions, bowling alleys. Some of these ships have uh, bumper cars, ice skating rinks. You can't possibly be bored. Um, I'm going to get the norovirus. That's another myth. I'm going to get sick. I'm going to be in the bathroom all the time. Uh, not true. Uh, ships are kept incredibly clean. You have to understand, if you're on a cruise ship with 4,000 passengers, you're on a cruise ship with 1,600 crew to look after you. Uh, 1,600 crew? Uh, there's got to be an army of 100 people that uh, are all over that ship at all times. 
vacuuming the floor, uh, uh, working the uh, disinfectants on the handrails, uh, constantly replenishing the hand washers where the buffet and the restaurants are, cleaning all the public toiletry areas, taking away the garbage. Uh, then there's the 1,500 others that are working on your rooms, keeping your state rooms clean, doing the laundry, preparing the food. It just goes on and on. There's an army of people. You're not going to get sick on the norovirus. The odds of you catching it are very low, very rare. Cruises are dangerous. Uh, well, uh, let's see. Uh, if a cruise ship were to leave and go right into the middle of a hurricane, I, I guess it could be a bit bumpy, but uh, cruise ships don't do that. Cruise ships have radar systems on board, and they have their head office meteorologists telling the captains and navigators at all times uh, what areas of the, of the ocean to avoid. Uh, they know the itineraries of every ship constantly monitoring satellite positioning. They know exactly the wave heights of the waters that they're going into. They know the wind speeds. They know the, the systems that are coming through. Uh, cruise ship, uh, cruise ship uh, itineraries are not dangerous at all. They're quite, uh, quite boring, uh, <laughs> generally speaking, although it makes for great media when you can get a nice wave uh, going beside a ship. It always makes for good media because it's rare. Another myth, everybody's drunk on a cruise. Um, no, that's not true. Um, now, if you're going on a spring break, a uh, long weekend cruise with a bunch of college kids, you know, you're going to be surrounded by a lot of young people getting drunk. Um, I will give you that, but not all cruises are like that at all. Uh, typical cruises uh, go from four days, seven days, 12 days, two weeks, and uh, they go to a bunch of different places uh, through the itinerary, and uh, people just can't keep up that kind of pace. Uh, there might be one night where a few folks are putting one on, uh, but I can tell you the next day they're trying to sleep it off, and it's nice and quiet. Uh, no, they're not drunk all the time. With cruise ships holding up to five, 6,000 people, uh, that would be impossible to monitor, and it's just not the case. I'll be bored is another myth. I'm going to be bored to tears being on a cruise. Nothing to do. Uh, sorry, you're not going to be bored. Uh, you're going to have lots to do, lots to see, lots to enjoy. Uh, you're going to be fine. The other option, the opposite of that one is I'm going to be too busy. I, 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 there's just too much to do on a ship. I can't do it all, so I'm really not getting my money's worth because I'm, I'm going to be too busy. No, that's not the case either. A cruise is basically what you make it. If you want to be a busy person on a cruise, you can be a busy person on a cruise. If you want to be uh, lazy and just take it easy, cruises are made for you as well. Then there are the shore excursions, which you can either take with the cruise line or discover a cruise uh, destination on your own or with your travel friend. There are a million ways to enjoy a cruise, and it is, in effect, your call what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. It's absolutely perfect that way. A cruise is not a cultural experience. Okay, let's say you're taking a three-day bender, uh, going to one stop and back. Well, okay, you're not going to get a lot of culture. You're going to get a lot of alcohol, a lot of partying. But if you're going to take a 10-day cruise in the Mediterranean, starting in Barcelona and working your way to Rome and Naples and Florence, and other European stops, you're going to get a lot of culture. Um, now, the only way you're not getting culture is, is if you're not paying attention, you're going to be surrounded by it. So pick the cruise that you want for what it is you want from it. Another myth, too many kids. There's just too many kids on these cruises. I can't stand it. Well, uh, yeah, there are ways to avoid uh, cruise lines with too many children. Uh, go on a cruise line that doesn't allow anyone under 18 on board. Uh, Viking Ocean Cruises, as an example, adults only, no children whatsoever. The other way to avoid kids on a cruise uh, greatly would be to take a cruise that uh, takes place when the school year is on. When kids are in school, that's when you go on a cruise. If you're going to go on a cruise on Easter weekend, uh, yeah, there's a lot of families out there taking cruises with their children. You may want to avoid that time of the year. Another myth, I'm going to gain a lot of weight. Um, well... You know what? People tell me that they gain weight when they go and visit their relatives at Thanksgiving. <laughs> People tell me I gained weight over Christmas hanging out at my house because of all the food we were making. You're going to gain weight if you abuse yourself, of course. Uh, but on a cruise, it doesn't have to be that way. You can use the uh, jogging track on the top of the ship. You can walk around the ship like crazy on the promenade deck. 
just watch your intake. But hey, if you're going to have three big meals a day on a cruise ship, because after all, it is included, and you're going to drink like crazy, uh, because after all, you're on a cruise ship, and then you're going to have ice cream and desserts every chance you get, you're going to gain weight. Uh, that myth might not be a myth. That might be a reality. It's up to you to control yourself, though it doesn't have to be that way. I'll get seasick. That's another common myth. People are convinced that the minute they get on a ship, they're just going to get seasick. That is not true. Uh, it is not often anymore that people are running into a really bad stormy seas. These ships have stabilizers. The ships are, in effect, looking for the calmest waters to sail on. You'll find that after a couple of days, you're having a tough time even noticing that the ship even moves at all. Keep in mind, of course, uh, when the ship is sailing, you're sleeping. It's the middle of the night. You're gone. Wake up the next morning. You don't realize it. You're already docked at your next port of call, and the ship isn't moving whatsoever. You had a whole day out on the uh, on land. Coming back in the afternoon, you're slowly coming out of the, the dock at uh, three miles an hour then into the calm waters, uh, it's unlikely you'll get seasick. But if you do feel queasy, don't worry. In the uh, in the stores on board the ship, they have all kinds of remedies for motion sickness. You can eat, always visit the uh, medical center on board. They will take care of you. You're not going to have a tough time with that. Uh, <clears throat> I have to get dressed up. This is another myth. I, I, I don't want to go on a cruise because I don't have a tuxedo. And I don't want to wear a suit and tie. And the women are saying, I don't have enough evening gowns to handle all this stuff. Not true. Cruise ships today are not like the kind of uh, cruises we see from the movies. You remember the movies when uh, people went on a Titanic? And you saw the guys in, in uh, black uh, black uh, suits with the, with the black tie events and uh, the butlers everywhere. Folks, today's cruise ship... Uh, vacations are uh, free for all. Do what you want, when you want, how you want. You can eat casually every night. You can eat in a specialty restaurant every night. And for guys, you want to go to the most expensive restaurant they have, you can go in a, a jacket and a polo shirt and a, and a pair of slacks. You're good to go. Just don't wear flip-flops. Ladies, you do not have to go all out, although, you know, uh, guys generally don't mind if you do. But you do not have to go all out to go out every night, especially depending on the kind of dining you're going for. If you're heading for the pizza stand or you're heading for the buffet, go casual, enjoy yourself. Think about Vegas. You dress on a cruise ship like you dress for Vegas. Uh, sometimes in Las Vegas, you are just hanging out in the casino, hanging out in the hotel lobby area and uh, with the slot machines. Other times when you're in Vegas, you're going to go to a show. You might get up, you might get dressed a little bit, but that's exactly what you could do in a cruise ship. It's exactly the same kind of uh, uh, dress code. It's very casual. It's very easy going. I have to eat dinner with people I don't know. That is a myth that uh, for some reason just won't go away. Uh, if you're a single traveler, you can travel on your own. If you're a couple and you want to be by yourselves, you can go into the restaurants, any of the establishment restaurants, any of them. And say to the uh, to the person who's going to seat you, I, we just want to seat, sit by ourselves. Now, it's possible that at the exact moment in time you come into the main dining room and you want a table for two, there aren't any available at this moment in time. But in the next 15, 20 minutes, one will open up. They'll give you a little uh, tracker, one of those little things that you hold in your hand that the lights go off when it's time to go on in. You can sit on your own or with the two of you if you like, or you can go the opposite direction and say, no, no, we do want to sit with other people. We want to sit with six other people and hear stories, and stories you will hear, no question about it. It's totally up to you. And the last myth is, I can't cruise alone. Uh, that's not true. Uh, even though cruise lines do offer a lot of their fares as a double occupancy thing, a number of cruise lines are now building specialty cabins just for solo travelers, and they sell them only to solo travelers at a special rate. It's not uncommon now for Norwegian to have uh, 10 or 12 solo cabins as a cluster of cabins where they have their own little uh, lobby, and uh, they have their own coffee-making area, tea-making area, iced tea. Iced tea, snacks, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but no, you can sail alone. Uh, but it is true that in the older ships, it used to be that you had to take a room for two people, pay double the fare, because you're, after all, taking up two spots when there's only one of you doing it. 
But nowadays, no. A lot of cruise lines are offering the cabins on a single fare basis. You just have to call the cruise line, talk to them directly, and let them tell you what they've got. Otherwise, do what I do. Call the travel agent. Call Amber and Travel. You'll see the link below. We have a travel agent for this channel. Talk, talk to the gals at Amber and they will help you if you're a solo cruiser. If you're also a handicapped cruiser, you have disabilities, they can also handle any disability cruise you're looking for, for motorized scooters or wheelchairs or that type of thing. Give them a call. They'll take good care of you. There you go. 15 myths that have been proven to be untrue. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that bell notification icon. You get an alert every time we do a new video. And join us for our group cruise to on the Harmony of the Seas in December 2020. We're going to Coco Cay. We're going to St. Thomas. We're going to St. Kitts. We're going to have a lot of fun. And I'd love to have you join us if you'd like to come on by. All right, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.